Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we are going way back in time to a very devastating time in this world. We're going back to World War I, where that war was fought in the trenches. It was a very tough war, a long war. You're looking through little things. You got sandbags all around you. You're with your compadres. You're trying to stay together as a group. And today we're looking at a game that is going to make you sort of feel like you're in the trenches. This is The Grizzle from Cool Mini or Not. This is a cooperative game from two to five players, takes about 30 minutes to play, has some really interesting artwork, has some interesting stories about how this game came about. And the people that, that were involved in this were ancestors of some of the people in the trenches. But let's take a look. I'll show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. At the beginning of the Grizzled, everyone gets to pick which character they're going to be and check out the really cool artwork on these characters. Now the object of the Grizzled is to get through this pile of Trials cards. And at the end there'll be some peace. And at the end of the game, if we've gotten through all those cards and everyone has played all the cards in their hand, we will have victory. However, these cards from the Morale Reserve will start to get added to this pile, making it harder. And if we ever see the monument, we fail and lose. There's one other lose condition, we'll talk about that later. So each person has their character. They have three support tokens that look like coffee, and they'll all start with use at least three cards in the first round, maybe more depending on some decisions. Now over the course of the game, players are going to be taking one action, and then it's going to go to the next player clockwise. The action that's going to happen most often is they're going to put a threat card into what's called no man's land. And here we see two threats. We see knight and a bullet. And then it would go to the next player's turn. Now let's say the next player throws down this. Now this has day, a gas mask, and, and, a, and a whistle, which is the start of an assault. Now let's say the next player plays this. We have rain and we have two bullets. So right now we have two identical threats. We have two bullets there. So if <clears throat> at any time, let's say someone else plays this card, it's a third bullet, we will have failed this battle. Uh, and that would be a bad thing. So people are trying to not fail things, but you're trying to get rid of as many cards as you can. Now, another thing you could do on your turn is throw down what's called some of these hard knocks cards. These are the two types of cards. We have threat cards, which we talked about. And we have hard knocks cards. These hard knock cards will have one or multiple of these hard knock lo logos on them. I said there was another lo lost condition at the beginning of the game. If any one player has four of these icons in front of them, the game automatically ends. And this is a trauma card. What this means is this is always night. As long as this player is in play, there's always one additional night. So for example, if we look at these cards, we have one knight here, and my trauma card acts as another knight. So right now there's two knights. If someone were to throw a third knight card out there, that would be the end of the round because the battle would have ended. So if the board looked like this, and this person had the trauma card in front of him, this actually acts as a second knight. So even if a second knight card gets played out here, someone might not see this in front of me, and it would have triggered the end of the battle because there would have been three knights. Now there's some other type of hard knocks cards that are not trauma cards. They're like this, mute. And this says they usually do something bad. For example, you can no longer speak or communicate with each other in any way, and you cannot use one of these speeches. We'll talk about this later. Uh, but typically, you can communicate with people during the game, but you can't tell them what cards you have in your hand and things like that. So let's say the next player plays this. Now, look at this. This is called a trap. When a trap is played, the next card off the trials deck has to just automatically come out. Ooh, look at that. We've got two reigns and three gas masks, and that would have caused the end of a battle we would have lost. And when we lose, essentially all these cards that were here will get shuffled up along with this trial part, uh, pile, because you'll have to go through these trials again, and this is a bad thing. Also, at the end of every round, we count how many cards every player still has in their hand. So let's say there was a total of six cards out there. Well, six cards would get taken from this pile, added to this pile, which gets us closer to a, a loss condition, because once this is revealed, the game is over and we have a lost. So you don't want to lose any battles there. Now at the end of a normal round, uh, we would go through and see who has the most support, but we haven't gotten there yet. So let's just, that's just how you would lose a battle. So how do you actually win a battle? Well, let's say we're in a new round and we have this here. We're good, but we're getting kind of shaky. And you can do some different things on your turn. 
Now I showed you that you're either playing a card in No Man's Land, as we've been showing you, or you're playing one of these hard knock cards. Those, you know, that, that happens most of the time during the game. But when you want to withdraw, you can also take one of your support tokens that you have and just place it in front of you on your character and say, I withdraw, I'm basically going away, I'm going to go support. And so these, these tiles, you start with one that says left, one that says right, and then one that's kind of random. And with a lot of with multiple players, you have some that go two players to the left. So I would secretly, and I cannot say which player I'm supporting, I put this on here. Now when you do this, this actually stops any of the hard knock cards you have. So if you have a lot of these trauma, it's good for you to go out early because this sort of blocks it. I like to put the character over that with the support token to show that. And what that means is there what used to be two knights because one here and one for my hard knocks card, but now there's just one. So by me supporting, helps the other players continue to go down this path. Now, another different thing you could do on your turn is you see this lucky charm here. Every character has a different one. For your action, you can remove one of the cards that has this from no man's land and then flip this over. So in this case, I could say, oh great, this is going. That would get discarded out of the game. And the last possible thing you can do is say a speech. Now there's some speeches, a different amount depending on how many players, and they all kind of say cool things like, all together we'll be able to, or hang on, we're almost there. They all kind of just, they're the same action, but they're just different speeches to make it cool and thematic. Now at the end of the round, whoever was the dealer or the leader for that round will pass this clockwise. And when that gets passed, the person who was the leader of that round will take a speech from the middle if there's one available. And then they can say a speech by taking this and saying, my friends, don't be afraid they discard this out of the game and then they can basically say any type of threat they could say everybody can remove one card that has a bullet out of the game and so i had this card which was really bad it had six threats on it i could remove this in the game because i had a bullet and so could everybody else just a way of get people's cards out of their hands that are really bad so again on your turn you're doing one thing you're either playing a card in no man's land playing a hard knocks card down on yourself you're either withdrawing you're using a special Lucky Charm if it's there, or you're saying a speech. Those are all the actions you can do. Now, if everyone has withdrawn, and we have not lost the battle, then everybody has withdrawn for support and we actually win the battle. And what happens here is if you win, you take all these cards, and if you remember when you lost, these got shuffled and got put back because you have to face them again, these actually get discarded out of the game. Yeehaw! Now, everyone would flip over their support tokens and they would pass them to the person that it says. So this would go left, I'd pass it to the person on my left, and so on and so forth. If there is one player that has more support than everybody else, they get to do something cool. If we won the battle, they can either, let's say he had already used this special ability, they could either flip his guy back over so he has the, the, the lucky charm back, or they could get rid of any two uh, hard knocks cards from in front of them and discard them out of the game. That's huge. If we had lost the battle and this person had the most support, they can just get rid of one of these hard knock cards. That's the only option. And at the end of that round, you pass this over. Whoever was the leader gets one of these speeches. We, everyone flips over their, their tokens. Now remember on the support tokens, if there is not one person that has more than everybody else, meaning two people are tied for the most, nobody gets support so that is tough so we've moved this over we've gotten a speech token for the, the last leader everyone flips their their support tokens back over we count however many cards everybody still has in their hand that many gets added from here to here and then they deal out the, the new person deals out as many cards as they want at least one to everybody around the table sometimes you want a little bit of cards sometimes you want a lot depending on how many cards people have and again you win if you get all the way through peace and everyone gets rid of all their cards or you lose if this is shown, or if anybody has four of these logos in front of them, and that's the Grizzled. Now there's a two player variant, and in that player, you have a third player. This is the third guy. He doesn't do anything, he's just the chaplain there for support. What happens is at the end, at the beginning of each round, he just randomly shuffles these support tokens up and puts one out. This is what he's gonna be supporting. He doesn't play the round. At the end of the round, Everyone flips over their support tokens like normal and passes them to where they're supposed to go. This guy passes over to the right and so on and so forth. And now, again, who, if someone has more support than everyone else, they get it. So what this does is it kind of randomizes. You're not quite sure where the support's going to go. So you may screw up and have everybody tie, which means nobody gets support. All right, I'm going to start by saying I am typically a very big fan of cooperative games. I love them. Some people don't like cooperative games because of what's called quarterbacking or alpha game where they tell everybody else what to do. This game takes that and throws it out of the water. No one can complain that this is alpha gamer because everyone's doing what they want on their turn and you cannot communicate as to what cards you have in your hand and you can't communicate as to who you're giving support to at the end. 
So you're working together, but it removes that. So if you're afraid of that, or that's been a thing in the past, try this one out, because it's really good. I'll also say that this game has gotten a ton of hype online through the different board game media people, starting at Gen Con, where people kind of like blew this game up as, oh, this is the greatest game ever. Let me recalibrate that. If I was the first person to play this at Gen Con, because it wasn't on my radar either, and I played this and I knew that nobody else was talking about it, because I listened to what everybody else is saying out there, I also would be raising the flag going, gosh, this game's awesome, you gotta play this game, no one's talking about it, this is a diamond in the rough. I agree, this is an excellent game. It's, it's a really good, solid co-op game. I do feel it was probably overhyped because of the amount of people that jumped on that bandwagon. So I might be contradicting myself, and I kind of am. It's a good game. It's a very good game. It's an excellent game. It just might not be worthy of how much hype it's gotten. So, yes, it's a great game. But it, not game of the year, but awesome game. I like how it gives you a tension feeling. You're playing these cards, you can't talk about what you have, and you're trying to get through it. And there's just this level of tension, it almost feel, not that I am not trying to compare this to war, because that's just ridiculous, but it gives you a tension. They're trying to make you feel the weight that they may have felt on their shoulders. I think this does a great job of that. The artwork's awesome. The, the mechanics are great. It's pretty simple. Um, the, even the two player, so you, you play it with multiple players, two player with that chaplain, it still works fine because that randomization of the support token, you're going to be trying to give support and it just won't happen a lot of times. So it's good. If you only play two players, it's still worthy of playing. Now, with that being said, I still enjoy it more with, with, with more players. Three or four is about my favorite, but it plays great with, you know, well enough to, that you could buy it for all the players. So overall, it's a great co-op game, 30 minutes or less. It's like nothing else I have. It's like none of the other co-ops mechanically or thematically, and I typically love historical themes. So if you're looking for something like that, The Grizzled is a solid choice. It's going to be one that I think we're still going to be talking about in years to come, and that's The Grizzled.